Hello folks, this is Ayatan Ajha from InspiredRise.com and today we are going to talk about the Samsung Galaxy A72 smartphone. This is one of the latest smartphones in the A series by Samsung and today we are going to unbox the same and tell you everything about it in our long term review. So inside the box, the first thing that you find is the smartphone, you get the Simtray ejector tool, you get the quick start guide, the warranty card, the regional lock guide and all of that stuff. Apart from all of that, you also get the fast charger inside the box for the smartphone, which is the 25 watt fast USB-C to USB-C charger. You also get a Type-C to Type-C cable on the inside. And let's just open up the smartphone. You get the SAR values etc written at the back of the smartphone. And let's take a closer look at the built-in design. It has a complete plastic design and right now the world is divided over whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. I personally like the matte style finish on the plastic back as I have stated before as well. My greatest concern with plastic is the fact that it might get yellowish with time. Now a good thing is that it is IP67 dust and water resistant and it's available in awesome black, awesome white, awesome blue and the color that we had which is the awesome violet color. At around 203 grams I think it's not exactly really lightweight and the phone does have a certain amount of heft to it. At the back there's a slight camera bump with the camera setup the power button and the volume rocker both can be found on the right hand side there's nothing on the left hand side for the smartphone overall it has a very samsung kind of build-in design they have followed this build-in design on a52 as well there's a noise cancellation microphone with a hybrid sim tray slot on the top and at the bottom there's the 3.5 mm jack usb-c port speaker grill and a microphone hole one thing that I would like to really point out is the fact that the haptic feedback on this phone was slightly underwhelming. It's a slightly bigger and heavier phone than the A52 so keep that too in mind when you are going out there to buy this phone. But the weight distribution is really good and the boxy shape gives you a very good feel in hand. But the slightly flatter edges do feel cheap when you hold the phone at certain angles and it would look classier if the frame was a matte style one. And the thickness at 8.4 mm is good enough for normal day to day usage. And now let's talk about the display. Hey, nobody cares. Well, I hope that you do care and it has a Super AMOLED 6.7 inch display with 90Hz refresh rate. The higher refresh rate is the major upgrade from last year's A71. It has a whole punch style notch which Samsung calls as the Infinity O display. It has Corning Gorilla glass protection, a full HD plus resolution and 394 pixel per inch density. The colors were vibrant, saturated and great for media consumption. The maximum brightness goes up to 800 nits which is good enough for your outdoor usage as well. There's support for edge lighting for notifications in the display settings and there's an in-display fingerprint scanner here and although the tap to touch target is small here, it still worked acceptable and I felt that it could have been slightly better. The bezels on this one are almost similar in thickness throughout though the bottom chin is still slightly big. The big bezels also help to camouflage the big earpiece which doubles up as a stereo speaker pair with the bottom firing speaker, I like the fact that this phone comes with a pre-applied screen protector out of the box. Other brands should definitely copy this. The good thing about Samsung's 90Hz implementation is that One UI takes full advantage of the panel here and hence there were no jitters or stutter during usage. It does support Widevine L1 and the dark mode implementation here is also pretty good. The fingerprint scanner is a tad bit slow and it does take time to unlock sometimes. The 90Hz here felt more optimized compared to the 120Hz on something like a budget Redmi Note 10 Pro device. So that's also something that you should keep in mind. There's no notification LED on the smartphone and no official HDR certification, but Widevine L1 support is present here. There's no automatic drop to 60Hz mode on this phone to save battery life while watching videos or doing other stuff. It comes with an 8 nanometer based Snapdragon 720G chipset, 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage. The storage can be expanded up to 1 terabyte using the micro SDXC card slot. The 720G is an OK chipset but really falls behind the competition in this price bracket. Devices from Poco and Realme in this very price segment outperform the A72 by a fair margin. So if you are somebody who is going to game a lot and if you are really looking for a smartphone which will stay fast for the next couple of years, then this phone might not be the one for you. Right now, normal day to day needs and even heavy multitasking can be managed by this smartphone with ease but maybe few months down the line, things might change. When you see that A52 of 
offers similar performance for a much lower price, then that definitely makes the A72 harder to recommend. If you don't fiddle with the settings, you might find frame drops while playing games and the internal storage is fast but not flagship grade fast and at around 500 Mbps reads and 270 Mbps write speeds, it's okay at best. If you talk about gaming, most of the games run fine but if you play something like Asphalt or any other heavy game for really long and you will definitely see skipped frames. It comes with Android 11 based One UI 3.1 and Samsung has left no stone unturned to make sure that this phone is filled to the brim with unwanted bloatware and crazy notifications. It took me quite some time and effort to remove it. Samsung has promised 3 years of OS updates and 4 years of security updates and that does increase overall purchasability of this device. The default browser shows occasional lags while heavy surfing and the latest update did bring the security patch level to Apple for the smartphone. This is a Samsung game launcher as well here which allows you to fine tune gaming even further with resolution, scalar and much more features. And now let's talk about the camera for this device. It has a 64 megapixel primary camera sensor with the f1.8 aperture and support for face detection autofocus plus OIS. There's an 8 megapixel f2.4 telephoto sensor as well, which also comes with OIS and supports up to 3x optical zoom. There's a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide sensor with a wide 123 degree angle field of view. And finally, there's an f2.4 5 megapixel macro sensor, which is okay for what it does, but nobody would have missed it even if it wasn't present here. There's a 32 megapixel pixel f2.2 aperture front camera as well sometimes every once in a while the scene optimizer for this device messes up the colors but normally it works great with the latest updates night mode now works on the front camera as well and ultra wide camera as well now 4k 30 fps recording works on all of the camera lenses and the low light performance is good but the night mode algorithm still needs some work I found that the front camera based face unlock was much faster than the in display fingerprint sensor. There's a slight color difference between the ultra wide and the main camera sensor with the ultra wide going for a slightly more aggressive contrasty look. There's a single selfie camera here but the UI gives you the option of taking wide or close up selfies. There are n number of modes like hyperlapse, super slow motion, panorama and a fun mode as well which allows you to use snapchat filters and that's something for uh, really deranged people i guess but still it's there 4k 30 fps videos are possible but the super steady stabilization works only up to a 1080p resolution and apart from all of this there's up to 30x software based zoom which is possible there's a pro photo mode and pro video mode as well you get 4 is to 1 pixel bent shots and the automatic hdr algorithm definitely needs some fixing as it did not trigger automatically every time when i was clicking shots apart from all of this let's talk further about the image quality the colors felt good without looking extremely oversaturated 64 megapixel mode is present and can be manually used but normally it defaults to 6 16 megapixel which is more than enough for most users as the 64 MP mode runs into troubles of its own kind with some artifacts and issues with complex patterns or building shapes. The telephoto camera is good but at 8 megapixel resolution sometimes things aren't exactly that sharp on that one and apart from all of that the portrait mode also sometimes misses the mark. The 32 megapixel selfie camera gives great pictures, 12 megapixel in wide mode and 8 megapixel in normal mode. The plane of focus is good but you need to know that there is no autofocus here. The 4K video quality across all of the three cameras is good and yes, the color difference is definitely noticeable between the sensors. And I found that the main camera sensor is the one which is a little bit warmer and maybe the color science requires small amount of fixing and now let's talk about the sound on this one so it does have a stereo speaker setup but the bass was underwhelming the sound gets sufficiently loud but the lack of low end makes it slightly less appealing inclusion of dolby atmos audio does make things better though the top earpiece isn't a dedicated speaker unit but at least this hybrid stereo setup allows for some sort of stereo separation and dolby atmos software also comes with dolby atmos for gaming for enhancing in-game footsteps audio on the smartphone 
If we talk about connectivity, it comes with support for dual band Wi-Fi, VO Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, top-notch GPS with AGPS, GLONASS, Galileo and BDS support. It does have FM radio, NFC and supports USB OTG as well. Talking about the battery on this one, it has a 5000mAh lithium-ion battery with support for 25W fast charging. The fast charger is present inside the box. The battery lasts a whole day on moderate usage with some casual gaming thrown in the mix. It takes around 90 minutes to do a full 0 to 100 charge cycle. The charging times were slightly inconsistent sometimes and if we compare the A52 versus the A72 smartphone, the A72 has the larger battery here at 5000 mAh versus the 4500 mAh on the A52. It has a slightly better stereo speaker and sound quality. The A72 has a bigger display, a 25 watt fast charger inside the box and you also get a telephoto sensor and OIS in the camera on the A72 which is missing in the A52. And if we talk about a final conclusion, the Galaxy A72 retails for a price of around 35,000 rupees online for the 8128 GB version and at this price it's definitely not cheap and has competition from n number of other brands. If it doesn't fulfill your needs and you don't want all of the extra that it has to offer then you can definitely go for A52. There's so much competition out there. There's the Redmi Note 10 Pro. There are so many other smartphones from Poco and Realme. Truth is that the competition is so heated up that I feel comfortable recommending the smartphone only to die-hard Samsung fans and for others there are a lot of other choices in the market as i always say plenty fish in the sea so guys this was it for this video and no matter what you do stay inspired to rise like this video and subscribe or absolutely nothing will happen but hey it'd be a lot cooler if you did <laughs>